الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباد الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم خذ من اموالهم صدقه تطهرهم وتزكيهم بها وصل عليهم ان صلاتك سكن لهم والله سميع عليم وقال النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام ارحم من في الارض يرحمكم من في السماء او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام Alhamdulillah, my respected elders and dear brothers, all praises is due to Allah, who is the sustainer, creator, nourisher, provider. And all thanks, of, all thanks is due to Allah alone, who has made us in the ummah of Sayyidina Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On our previous talk, we mentioned that what, what is the way to take from the treasures of Allah? We discussed linking, from, linking ourselves to Allah Rabbul Izzat. And thereafter, taking from the treasures of Allah. Once a person recognizes Allah, and he puts his reliance and trust in Allah, then eventually he learns to take from the treasures of Allah. And after taking from the treasures of Allah, then a person gets the second opportunity, and that is to spend in the path of Allah. So they say, a person, every person is looking for risk. Every person is looking for risk. And Allah has made it such that the distribution of rizq is solely in the hands of Allah. Every person is looking for rizq and the distribution of rizq is solely in the hands of Allah. So the ulama explain if you look in Quran and you look in Hadith, there are many many avenues, there are many many ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distributes his rizq and distributes wealth. They say it's like keys. You know, you get a bunch of keys. So they are, it's like keys that opens up the doors of the treasures of Allah. So amongst those many keys, inshallah, briefly we'll discuss three. The first key which Allah mentions that opens up the doors of risk, Allah says, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقَ نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلتَّقْوَى The key that Allah mentions, Allah says that, oh, O insan, O human being, O Muslim, and join your family. Wa'mur ahlaka with salat. And join your family towards salah. Huh? Encourage your family to perform salah. And what type of salah? Was tabir ali Allah say and become steadfast on that. So when you explain, ulama explain, they say that salah that Allah is talking about, that enjoin it upon not only yourself but your family. That salat which Allah is talking about, Allah is talking about salat with punctuality. That the male is performing his salah in the masjid, the female is performing her salat at home on its time. And the children likewise. The father is on the same page, the son is on the same page. The father is reading his salat in the masjid, the son is also performing his salah in masjid. So when that happens, when there's punctuality on salat in the household, once a person was walking past a house, so a person was, uh, the, the owner of the house came to an alim. He said, oh Maulana, there's no barakat in my house. So Maulana Sahib said, you know what, close the door of your house. So he said, what is the relevance? Well, how does this make sense? Close the door of your house. And I'm asking, there's no barakat in my house. What does this mean? So the Maulana Sahib said, after a while told him, that daily there's a person who is passing your house. His gazes is falling into your house. And unfortunately, this person who's passing your house is not performing salah. So the bare barakati of his not performing salah, that eyes is falling into your house, barakat is not coming into your house. So the children, the wife, the husband, everybody is on the same page. Allah say, I will do something for you. Wastabir aliha. Then Allah say, La nas aluka rizqa. We do not ask you for risk. Nahnu narzuka. Allah say, we will provide. We don't ask you. Allah say, I will give you. So when Allah is blessing that person with risk, now he's got the responsibility towards fulfilling that duty of that risk which is coming towards him. That's the first ayat where Allah says, one of the keys that opens up, risk. I'm just going briefly, the third one is important, that's the one I want to discuss. The second one Allah says, فَقُلِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ مِنَّوْ كَانَ غَفَارَ يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِذْرَارَ وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالِ وَبَنِينَ Allah explains in Quran that Allah says, make a abundantly. Huh? Allah says, repent, make dua, 
Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam daily used to make astaghfar hundred times. Daily. So how much more mustn't we make astaghfar? Just by making astaghfar. And Allah does not say practice. Allah says faqul. Allah uses the word kul. Say. So a person sitting with a tasbih in the masjid and he saying astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. The doors of rizq are getting open for him. And the more you say, the more Allah is going to make it easy for rizq. That's the second, second key that we're talking about. And the third one, this is the one that we want to discuss. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and spend in my path. That wealth that I bestow you, spend it in, in my path. Allah gives many ayats. They say there's close to 82 ayats in the Quran. Close to 82 ayats in the Quran where Allah encourages insan, when Allah encourages us to spend in the path of Allah. Allah says, وَنْفِقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُ وَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُ And then another ayat Allah says, وَمَا تُنْفِقُمْ مِنْ خَيْرِ وَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ Allah says, if you spend in my path from anything that I bestow on you and you spend it in my path, Allah says, I will compensate you. In Quran, Allah says, يَمْحَقُ الْرِبَى وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ Allah says that interest will diminish your wealth. And on the other hand, Allah says, Sadaqa will increase your wealth. Allah says, وَمَا تُنْفِقُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ Allah says, if you spend of goodness, you spend of wealth in my path, Allah says, incomplete. Allah says, I will give you more than what you are spending. Rabia Basriya Rahmatullah Ali says, she was, she once a beggar came to the house. So she gave whatever she had for that morning. So the slave, after a few minutes, the slave says, somebody is knocking at the door. The person brought in some rotis. Say, give this to Rabia Basriya Rahmatullah Ali. So she said, how many rotis? Rabia Basriya asked her, how many rotis did the slave, did this person bring? So he brought nine. She said, no, I don't need it. So second time, third time she says, the slave says, she asked the slave, how much rotis did this person bring? The slave says, in reality she brought ten. But one I kept behind for my need because I was just as hungry as you are. So then Rabia Basriya Rahmatullah Ali explains, she says that Allah says, Man bil hasanati that if you give one in the path of Allah, Allah says, I will give you ten. So she had the complete yakin that if you give in the path of Allah, Allah will give. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu says, he says that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah says, Allah says, Allah says, Anfiq yunfaq alayk. Allah says, spend in my path, I will spend on you. Huh? And when Allah gives, Allah's treasures is unlimited. Allah gives what? What ease, what afiyat. Allah gives what prosperity. Allah gives, gives when Allah gives, Allah gives a person what contentment. Huh? In this ayah that I quoted in front of you, min amwalihim sadaqatan tutahirun. It's something that yesterday I learned that Nabi Ali Islam, like we on a Friday, we're sending durood. We are making durood sharif to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah tells Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Quran, wa salli alayhim. That that person who's spending in my path, wa salli alayhim, O Nabi of Allah, you make dua for him. Abdullah bin Abi Ufar radiallahu ta'ala narrates, he says on the authority of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that that person who spends in the path of Allah, Allah has commanded Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that make dua for such a person. In, and then Allah goes on further in that same ayat, وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ Make dua for him. Then Allah says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَسَكَنُ اللَّهُمْ Your dua that you are making, O Nabi of Allah, you are lifting your hands to make dua for your ummah. Allah says, through that dua, I'm going to give that person who is spending in my path security. I'm going to give that person in my path who is spending in my path peace. <laughs> Abdullah bin Ufa, the same sahabi says, when my father used to bring gifts to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to give the dua, Allahumma salli ala ali abi Ufa. Oh Allah, send your mercy, send your invocation, send peace, send security on the family of Abi Ufa. The topic for discussion today actually is the, the Syrian, the place, uh, Mubarak land of Sham. Huh? The Mubarak land of Sham. It is mentioned that Zaid bin Sabit radiallahu anhu narrates, he said that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Blessed is Syria. This was Syria. Sham is called, if you talk of Sham, we talk of Jordan, we talk of Syria, we talk of uh, Lebanon. 
we talk of Palestine. These are all, they call it the Levant, it's called Sham. But when we talk Syria, Syria it's on its own. Nabi Salaam said, Blessed Hazrat Zayd bin Sabi radiallahu anhu narrates on the authority of Nabi Salaam. Then Nabi Salaam said, Blessed is Sham. Huh? Then he said again, Blessed is Sham. Then Sahaba inquired, O Nabi of Allah, what is the meaning of blessed is Sham? So Nabi Salaam said that Allah has commanded two angels to spread their wings over Syria, over Sham, over Syria. Because Nabi Salaam mentioned this riwayat, Syria, in particular Syria. Two angels have been commanded to spread their wings. So the ulama are going to explain that what is the meaning of the spreading of the wings. And the meaning of that is mentioned that Allah will save these people from kufr. Allah will save them from disbelief. That in this time and age when they are going through such atrocities, atrocities where we find hunger is the name of the game, hunger is the name of the day, huh? we find at that time, just to come back on the story of Hazrat Abu Bakr on spending in the path of Allah, just re 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 refresh my memory. They say in the battle of Tabuk, in the battle of Tabuk, Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu said that, and this was the lifeline and, the, and what was running in the blood of Sahaba. They were trained by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Their days were spent in the path of Allah, their nights were spent in the path of Allah. And at nights, they used to spend their nights looking for people who were wayfarers, who were travelers. They were, at nights, they used to spend their times to go and look after the needs of people, the creation of Allah. They say the easiest way, huh? a person makes his salah, he makes his zikr, the easiest way to get to Allah, to make Allah open up his rahmat and mercy is to spend on people. Anfik yunfak alayk, spend on people and see how Allah's mercy descends. Allah loves that purple person whose, whose hand is open. Huh? The hand that is above is better than the hand that is below. Huh? So Tabuk, in Tabuk, Hazrat Abu, Abu Umar says, I brought most of my wealth. I brought my wealth and I looked at my wealth and I looked at Abu Bakr radiallahu's wealth. And I said, my wealth is much more. Today I'm going to surpass Abu Bakr radiallahu. I'm going to bypass it. I'm going to, I'm going to, Exceed, I've got more wealth, I'm going to pass Abu Bakr So look at the question Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked. Abu Bakr comes with his wealth, he puts it. Abu Umar is very happy. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi look at the question Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, Ya Abu Bakr, Ya Umar, Ma Tarakt, Ma Khalaft. Huh? He didn't ask, what did you bring? He asked Umar Radiyallahu, Ma Tarakt, what did you leave? Ma khalafta, what did you leave behind? <laughs> Umar radiallahu said, Oh Nabi of Allah. Umar radiallahu immediately realized that I cannot pass Abu Bakr radiallahu. He realized. When he said that, Umar radiallahu said, I brought half my wealth, O Nabi of Allah. Nabi Sassam asked Abu Bakr radiallahu, Ma tarakta ma khalafta. Abu Bakr radiallahu says, Oh Nabi of Allah, I brought everything. I brought everything that I possessed. And they say on that same occasion, Umar Abu Bakr took a sack, a sack, even took his clothes and put it in the path of Allah. He took a sack, he used stones to sew that sack, to, to stitch it, like we say to stitch it, and he put it around his body. And look at the, at the, at the grace of Allah, look at the mercy of Allah. Jibreel alayhi salatu descends. And he asked Nabi of Allah, Oh Nabi of Allah, I have come with, through the command of Allah. Allah has a request, and Allah has a question, and Allah has a plea to Abu Bakr <laughs> What is that? Huh? Jibreel alayhi salatu salam is asked, telling Nabi salatu salam that Allah is saying something to Abu Bakr and asking a question to Abu Bakr and what is the question? Allah is asking, Oh Abu Bakr why did you adopt this? What, what have you done? So Nabi salatu salam is telling Jibreel, Jibreel alayhi salam that go and tell my beloved Allah, Abu Bakr gave everything, that's why he's adopt, ad, 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 adopted this dress. So then Jibreel alayhi salam says, my Allah is asking, Oh Abu Bakr are you happy with me? <laughs> Allah is asking Abu Bakr if Abu Bakr is happy with Allah. Huh? They spent in the path of Allah. So on this, on this token, the, the lens of Sham, the lens of Syria, my brothers. One, one riwayat is mentioned. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, there will be a flag in Syria. There will be a flag in Yemen. There will be a flag in Iraq. So Sahaba asked Nabi of Allah, which flag should we go towards? Nabi Sallallahu said, go towards the flag of Syria, towards the flag of Syria. And if you cannot go to Syria, then go to at least to Yemen. Huh? Nabi Sallallahu encouraged, 
in this day, that's the second. Then Nabi Sallallahu said, the stronghold of this ummah will be in the Levant. The stronghold of this ummah will be in those places. Huh? It is from there where our, 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 our revival is going to come. It is from there where, where, where Allah is going to revive this beautiful deen. So fortunate is those people who put their names on the registers of helping the people who are in distress. And I come to that, you know, in time constraints, we are told time is time. So inshallah, we'll complete on time. There's so much to say, but I'm, I'm concising, bringing it down. The trip, my dear brothers. Allah shukr. Allah has given us opportunity to travel. And travel with us, we're making dua constantly. Everybody makes dua, Allah, please. Let me not, the dua we should make, everybody is sitting here. Allah, let me not leave this dunya empty-handed. Huh? Let me not leave this dunya empty-handed. Janazas are leaving every day. What are we leaving with? That is the question. So the need is that, oh Allah, you give me an opportunity. I, on one hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, dirham, One dirham has surpassed 100,000 dirhams. So in this hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encourages, sometimes the poor person sitting here says, but I don't have money, what am I going to do? <laughs> and the rich person says, you know what, I've got so much commitments, what can I do? So in this hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, rich and poor, both must contribute in a part of Allah, according to your capacity. And in this hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, one dirham is surpassed 100,000 dirham. Sahaba asked, how? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained, he said that the person giving one dirham, he's got two dirhams, so he gave one dirham, he's given half. A person has got a million, and he gives 100,000, and he's given one-tenth. The one that is given half is surpassed the one that is given that given one tenth. So in that Allah explains, give in the path of Allah. Huh? Spend in the path of Allah, take out. So Allah has given us the faculty, the brain. So on this trip, my dear brothers, there are people that have left in Istanbul, in Turkey alone. There are three million refugees. Three million who've come with just this bag and the clothes on their body. And we've been there and you see the plight of these people. My dear brothers, the trip that we make is not a trip of adventure. It's not a trip of pleasure. It's a trip of tears and pain. It's a trip of tears and pain. That you go to these places and you see people that were leading normal lives. That were leading normal lives. In a few years, in a matter of seven years, they are in distress. We met a brother who's working on the borders of Syria. He's belonging to an organization. We work through organizations. You can, it's difficult to do your own thing. You work through organizations. You try. That's why the plea is that every person should take out. Take out from your household. Take, all clothes are needed there, brothers. We sit with tons of clothing. One alim, the wife of one alim, told my family. They say, whenever you buy something, replace the old one. Give it away. And that has been an added for the last 25 years. Allah shukar. Huh? Replace it. People are waiting there. There's an office in Istanbul, my dear brothers. If you go, those, those helpers, they have got nothing. Their they are, they are, they salaries is... is <laughs> You can't even understand how they're making their needs, fulfilling their needs. But their figure is this ummah. And in this, it's called Rabitatul, Rabitatul Ulama of Suriyin. It's the ulama of Syria that have left Syria and have come to Turkey. And from there, they're making efforts. So the efforts needed there, inshallah, Bashir was telling me, he said, maybe you can say this is part one and part two to follow because we, we may not complete but I, whatever I can push, I'm going to push now in the next one, two minutes. Is that these ulama in, in Turkey, they have made, when you take your, like many a times we're giving zakat. Where are you giving your zakat? I put it in this account. I put. What we are saying is, brothers, accumulate your zakat. Take your zakat, get two, three, four, five people together, speak to them and go. We are ready to facilitate your trip. We are ready to show you where to go, how to do, what to do. Today, through the means of technology, WhatsApp, I can talk to you throughout your trip. <laughs> so there's no, there's no problem. We will arrange from the time you leave till the time you reach there, till you do your distribution. And what we're saying, you're giving into accounts. Go yourself. You don't have to go with big money. They, they welcome anything. And what they do in, in Istanbul, that's the first town that I'm talking about, they, they call you, they call in families, and with your own money, your own hands, they put your money into envelopes, and with your own hand, you do distribution. And what is the great thing is if you go with your family, with your wives, people are going for holidays. Ramadan finished, we need a holiday. Throughout the year, people are going on holiday. <laughs> this is the ideal place. Go there with your wealth. Spend in the path of Allah. Open up your hearts. 
so that Allah's mercy, Nabi Salaam's pain is in these places because the kafir is making daily an effort to snatch their iman. They're coming with handouts, my brothers, because these people have got nothing. When I say nothing, believe you me, they collect a box. We did distribution of food parcels. They get a box today. The next chance that person is going to get to get a box is after three months or six months. And they stand for five, six hours waiting for that box. And the dua they give you, you know what is the dua? They so content, Allah has put so much peace in their hearts. They say, Allahumma yu'atik al khair. Allahumma yu'atik al afiyah. Allahumma yu'atik al khair. As you're giving them that boxes, what cry from their hearts inside. Oh Allah give you jazaykh, like we say, jazakallah. Allah gives you afiyat. Allah gives you peace. Allah accept. You can't get these duas nowhere, my brothers. This is the place to go and take duas of people. Put your name on the register so on the day of Qiyamah when you come in front of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're not turned away. So if there's any brothers here, this is my tashkil, is that any brothers want to do something for the people of Syria, we are ready. Come talk. We will give you the... We will, we're not saying that we're going to take your money. No good way. There's no commission here. There's no... Everything comes. Allah, will, Allah is the provider. Allah is giving, making us the instrument and the means to say that help these people. It's not enough. Mashallah, they are very happy. In, the, in, in Turkey with the South Africans. South Africans are going in droves. And mashallah they are doing, there's yatim khanas, there's orphanages, there's a, there's a madrasa there which we visited with young, young girls, no father, no mother. So I made Elan there, I said, you are my, my children. That's how we adopt them. We say, you are my children. If you need anything, just give us a call. Tell your, tell your principal to call us. Believe me, within an hour, there was a phone call. While we still there, the girls are asking, can you just provide some shoes? They don't have shoes. Huh? Immediately the Jamaat we went with, Allah made it possible, we went with the, the Jamaat now recently. This Jamaat is from the area of Louis Trichat. From Louis Trichat and Alhamdulillah they are planning to put up madrasas in that area. Allah has blessed them. And they have already initiated 10 madrasas, maktabs, and there's needs of orphanages. There's need for everything my brothers. There's need for food. Food, they, uh, there's a story which will never ever leave like every experience you go is a different experience i complete on this experience and then inshallah whoever wants to do something for the for the land of syria i'm available come talk to me you can make groups you can go individually you can go with your families take your families take the wife and children it's an eye opener when they see the condition of these people my dear brothers they will stop wasting we will stop wasting the days of wasting and spending on things that we don't need will come to an end so inshallah on this one story, there was a youngster we met at 11 o'clock at night. His name is Fuad, 12 year old boy, little kid. And he's standing on the road and he says, please help. So we said, what do you want? So he says, come to my house. So we say, uh, this time of the night, he says, no, I've got a bicycle, I'll lead you. We say, no, okay, put the bicycle in the vehicle. We put the bike, we go to his house. A family of 10, only females in that house with his father. And he's the, young, the, the, the male of the house who's 12 years old, a young kid. No, it's sitting 12 o'clock on the street looking for help. Come to his house, his father is paralyzed, waist down. Mother is crying, she said, I don't know where we're going to put food on the table tonight. They, the children went to sleep without food. We hear of Sahaba stories, we hear that how they slept without. It's happening today, brothers. They're eating out of dustbins. What they're eating out at night, 3 o'clock in the morning, people with parda, women with parda, going out in the dustbins and searching for food. So the Jamaat, this child was so enthusiastic when we went there. And when, we, when he seen our, our plea, uh, when we seen his plea, the Jamaat went to the side, that was the Tartib. And he got, he, got, he got worried. You're going away, are you leaving? No, no, relax. I told him, don't worry. I showed him the sign. I said, don't worry. We're just going one side to decide how much we're going to give. Allah shukr this Jamaat that I went. They were, they were emptying their pockets. First of all, they only went on observing. And secondly, when, when we put the the need of Syria in front of them. My dear brothers, they made few phone calls in the matter of week, my dear brother, one week. They got their families, they got their cousins. Everybody gave them money. And with that money, Allah shukar, we did close to thousand distributions. Thousand. And when we put, now this to complete on this, the child, when the money was put in the hand of that mother, this child, he went into ecstasy like I haven't seen happiness. Like I'm the, I'm the male of the house. I brought in money at 11 o'clock in the night to feed my hungry sisters. The children were going to sleep. 18 years, nine, not small children. 18, 19, 20 year old girls. They don't have clothes, brothers. They don't have shoes. They, yeah. 
Allah give us tawfiq. Allah give us tawfiq to stop wasting. Weddings, we are wasting. We, we come for, the people, five times salah in the masjid. When we come to our weddings, we forget Allah. At that time, our weddings become like, like Ya Rabbi, Allah save us. Allah save us. Allah save us. Brothers, contribute. We're not doing a collection, but please, I, this is my joy. My joy is that from this majma, if people get ready, whatever you got, prepare it, go yourself. Go yourself, we will direct you. Once you go, you will not stop going. Wallah, you will not stop going. Allah give us tawfiq wa akhiru da'wanan.